Okay, have a quick sip of coffee before we get going. So I've refueled the aircraft. I'm going to be on the ground for a few moments while I get things sorted out. Um, control options. How are we doing? So we want the... Okay, um, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. battery is on. We've now got propeller and mixture. A little bit of throttle. We are going to turn the nav lights on and the beacon light on and turn the engine over. And push it out to a thousand RPM. Or just over. And switch on the avionics. Turn the alternator on. Okay, uh, we'll set our target, or calibrate the altimeter while we're here, set our target altitude to 2,000 feet for cruising along the coastline. Just waiting for the GPS to come up to capture some satellites. We'll program a few legs in, but we'll program the rest along the way, because there's quite a few, well there's not too many. Uh, we're at Port Macquarie at the moment. We're going to go up to Kempsey, Coffs Harbour, Grafton, Evans Head, Ballina, Gold Coast, Southport, and then Archerfield on the outskirts of Brisbane. Um, we'll go and have a fly around Brisbane, obviously, before settling into Archerfield. Seems to be somebody doing a group fly here. I wonder what group that is, does it say? Uh, group name... No, it doesn't say it on here. It will tell us on the, um, the who's online at Virtual Flight Online. Okay, let's port Macquarie and get rid of that out of the way. I guess I could run transmitter in the background for anybody that is interested in tracking me along the way. So connect that. Should get a little red aeroplane appear underneath me. Yeah, you can see it's right underneath me. Okay, GPS is up and running. So flight plan. Let's get the first few bits of the, the route plugged in. YPMQ. Our starting point today, then YKMP. Okay, what's going on with that? Kemp seat, that's correct. Then uh, Coffs Harbour, YCFS. Grafton, YGFN. Evans Head, YEVD. Ah, didn't mean to do that. Let's that. Balina, YBNA. Going 
Gold Coast YBCG. Southport YSPT. And Archerfield YBAF will be our final stop today. Well, actually, it might not be the final stop today. We'll see how the day goes. Um, okay, so we've got our show on the map now. We'll zoom out a little bit. We'll also put this on the first page because it gives us the nice data on ETE and distance. So, looking at the wind on the ground here at Actually, let's, should we go and run Navigraph as well in the background? Just for a bit of fun. So, I've got to, got to remember where everything is now. Navigraph, there it is. Patrick says, good morning. Yeah, it's been a few days since I've flown, so a bit rusty. Copy. Uh, file. How does this work? I can't remember how any of this works. Isn't it amazing how quickly you become rusty? Uh, unload the route, new flight, paste in from little nav map from the sequence we just programmed. That gives us our route up the east coast of Australia. So we're starting off down here, oh, sorry, down here, and we'll make our way. Should we just have a quick look at the weather en route to see if we've got anything showing up on cloud? It's a bit more cloudy up towards Brisbane then. I've rewound the time, obviously it's middle of the night in Brisbane, but you, oh, we can see there's some pretty serious rain north of Brisbane. Which way's the wind? By the time we get there, is that going to have hit Brisbane? Let's have a look at the wind barbs. Yes, it, oh, it could. It's coming over from this way, though. Let's have a look. Oh, no, it could be pushing straight out to sea then. We might be lucky. OK, let's turn the weather off for the moment. Just have the route. Um, the main aim I came in here for was to see what direction I was. Two knots of wind. We can just take off straight out. Okay. And we'll put the head tracking on. There we go. So I can see over the... direction that we'll be taking off. Actually, we won't worry about the compass just yet. We've already pre-selected altitude to 2,000 feet, which will be fine. Let's just check the... Yeah, the engine's going to be a bit loud, isn't it? I'm going to turn the simulator down so you can hear me over it, so it's not going to be ear-splitting. Full throttle. Sixty knots and begin to rotate gently, and we're in the air straight away. Gear up. We'll put the landing lights on today. Peter heat on. Oh, the transponder should have gone on. So...
might. side. So the airports we're visiting as we travel up the coast I have gone and got the Orbex versions of them of the ones I could so it'd be interesting to see some of them. So you can just see the GPS is starting to swing around here. So our first leg is going to take us inland to Kempsey. So 22 miles, 335 degrees on the compass. So let's level out. We're just coming up to 2,000 feet, which is perfect. If we go and spin this round then, put this on heading bug mode, or heading tracking mode. So we've got this in GPS mode at the moment obviously, it's within one click, let's see, this is probably going to be right on the limit of whether it will intercept, or oh, we'll spin the course knob as around now as well, so it just so it makes sense. So it's going in the same direction we're going, because we're going roughly the same direction as the track. So this would be interesting. If I switch over to nav mode, will it track across automatically? Well, no, it's gone to heading. Hmm. Okay, what we'll do is go to heading mode. I'll put ourselves on an intercept course with the track. And as soon as we get within one dot, if we go nav now, that's interesting, look, it's not going to do it. So maybe we do have to be within a dot on the, the meter, on the, the uh, CDI. Okay, so if we press nav now, still only doing roll. Is there something wrong here? Autopilot's on, altitude hold is on, although it's not going to 2000. Be interesting to see if this stops it because it won't arm it obviously because we're too close. But will it wind it back out when we get there? Yes, it has. Okay, good. So we've now crossed over the line. Let's go nav mode. We've got something wrong. Nav mode isn't working. Ah, is it, has this not got the correct leg? Maybe. No, it's got the correct leg program. Let's just cycle the CDI. I mean, it's not a major issue, but it's just a bit odd that this won't go to nav mode. Oh, it's doing it now. 
I think it was just cycling the CDI, it was a bit of a bug there. Okay, so we've got 15 miles to run until we get to... Uh, what was it again? Kempsey. Right, so now I can have a look. I'll turn the head tracking off so I can actually have a look at the... Um, live stream comments. Where are we flying to? We're going up the east coast of Australia. Do you think your subscription is worth it? Well, subscribing to a YouTube channel is free. So where is the harm? Um, you only have to look around at the videos I've done to realise what I do. I look at different aeroplanes that are available from a, a non-professional pilot perspective. So a lot of it is me learning and taking you along for the, the learning ride with me. Seeing, you know, how well an aeroplane is put together, having a play with it, learning its systems. So the more complicated aeroplanes, I do sp specific videos about them quite, to, you know, quite openly. Um, so this is your go-to channel apart from Shane's channel. Oh, I have no idea who Shane is. There you go. <laughs> so, okay, let's have a look at the scenery. So if we look on Navigraph, you can see we're just heading over to airfield here. So we see if we've got any charts for it from Navigraph. Open charts. Runway. Which runway is it going to be today? Can we get the weather? So 250 degrees. So we'll be coming in from the east onto, if we zoom in a bit further, they don't give you numbers do they? If you look at the chart, but obviously we can tell it's going to be the runway 22 I guess. Yeah, so we'll be coming in runway 22. A lot of these smaller airfields, you don't get much on the plate for them, which is a bit of a shame. But it's better than nothing. You get any kind of, you know, local restrictions are written up, usually. So if you're doing instrument approach in, you could obviously follow the chart. So you go out to KM2NI and come in and then obviously you can follow the altitudes on the way down. How are we doing? So we can see the airfield coming. We're just going to go visually. Obviously we've got a lovely clear day. So I should put the head tracking back on now. How are we doing on the engine? So fuel is full. It's a uh, manual... Oh, is it? No, we've got a both option. I've forgotten. I've, I've changed aeroplanes. I was in the station air the other day and now we're in the 182RG. And we can be very lazy with the fuel. Look, it has a both option on the fuel feed. So we don't have to keep an eye on draining the left or the right wing as we fly. So alternator seems to be working good. Uh, oil pressure is a little bit high. Oil temperature is okay. Cylinder head temperature is good. RPM is in the green. Let's see what fuel mixture we can get away with at 2,000 feet. So if we lean it out, it's keeping an eye on the RPM as we do it. So you can probably save quite a lot of fuel then. Oh, I wasn't watching that fuel flow then as I did that, which would be... A bit fascinating. We got that right down, didn't we? 6.9, so under 7 gallons per hour. And we are carrying... Oh, it doesn't actually tell you how many gallons you've got, which is a shame. 
I guess this doesn't either. Oh no, 58, sorry. So yeah, we got loads. Okay, so we should see the airfield in front of us. I think it's here, isn't it? So we're going to drop down a thousand feet. doing this is rust isn't it I so um, altitude we want to go to a thousand feet altitude and we want to arm that and then come down a thousand feet a minute and we'll turn to reciprocal which will be uh, 40 degrees so if we go heading bug mode, so you see there's the runway. Whoops. So let's just check the altitude of the runway itself. So if we highlight Camp C here, 54 feet. See that? So we've gone reciprocal and then we'll turn back in. So if you remember, there's that waypoint. So on the official, if you're doing like a, a high precision approach in, you'd be looking for that waypoint. But we're just going to go visually. So I'm going to turn the, way, the um, autopilot off. Well, before we do that, let's open the cow flaps. Go back to a rich mixture. Autopilot off. Start reducing speed to try and... This is the one problem, this sort of aeroplane, is you can't see the approach easily. the wrong way. We're just doing a touch and go, remember. The speed's coming off now, we're starting to put the flaps down. They're saying that we're holding the speed as we're descending. Could do with losing a lot more speed. So what we could do is... Oh, this is not wanting to... Um, side slip very much. Usually you could lose some speed in a side slip. We're way too fast. really is not wanting to lose any of that speed. How strange. So it helps if you realise that you've still got the limiter on the throttle that you had for a big aeroplane. This is the big problem of being r rusty with the simulator after I've not flown for a few days. And... 
having left the throttles configured for a 737, sorry, no, an Airbus I was flying the other day. Slowly shaking rust off as we go. Do I like the Comanche? Yes, I love the Comanche. Right, should we... Off we go to the next airfield. Just coming up through 1100 feet. Comes the track. Okay, we're just trimming out, so autopilot on. We are going to climb back up to a 2,000 feet. We'll arm that, oops, and then tell it to get there at, say, 500 feet a minute. And we'll go for... Which side are we? So we'll go for heading bug and leave the heading where it is, so the airplane will turn right gently. And then we'll go nav mode. And we get both because we're not close enough to the track, which is what I was expecting earlier. And then it will fall back to just nav mode once it's usually when it's within one click of the, the route. Just to make this make sense, we'll set this to the same radial, so 10 degrees on the course, even though we're in GPS mode. So you can see oops, uh, the direction of the versus the aeroplane, the direction of the track which should correspond with this and, and how close you are to it so it's still showing heading and nav mode which is fine should we um, lean the engine back out we're nearly at 2000 feet so we reckoned about 7 last time didn't we Okay, so I expect this, there we go, it's just switched to nav. So the airplane will gently edge back left again now. You can see it doing it. It's just turning. So we've got 45 miles to run, 20 minutes. So I might go make a coffee and leave the plane looking after itself for a few minutes. I am going to go turn that landing light off. We're not commercial traffic. We don't need it.
Okay, let's have a look at the route just before I go and nip off and make this coffee. So we're going past Stewart's Point, Grassy Head. We can see the altitude lines on here, so 400 times 3 for feet, or thereabouts. So 1,200 feet for these hills, so then still 800 feet away. But they're off to one side anyway. And you can see them there. But the highest points on them are significantly higher, aren't they? Let's have a look. So 200, 400, of course that's not the top. So 440, yeah, that's going to be up near the same sort of altitude as us. Which you can see it is. Oops. Just went back through the back of the head <laughs> headrests. <laughs> I picked out this colour today because I, I just love the interior on this one with the kind of faded red leather. It's kind of quirky, different. So the Gigalotis, I hope you say you say it, says hello. So hello back. Uh, UN says I play Simple Plane all day. I used to have a copy of that. I'm not sure what I did with it. Right, I'm going to go and refresh my cup of coffee. I'll be back soon. I'll leave us en route. We've got 18 minutes to run until we get to Yankee Charlie... Foxtrot Sierra, which is Coffs Harbour, and now this is going to be the Orbex scenery, or the, I don't know who originally developed it, it's the version that Orbex sell of Coffs Harbour, so we'll see that when we get there. We're head tracking off. Do it that way around. Back in a moment.
Brett, I'm back. I have coffee. So Brett is asking where we are headed. Uh, I will answer your question very shortly. So we're going to Coffs Harbour immediately. We're on the east coast of Australia. And then Grafton, Evans Head, Ballina, and then Southport, up Archerfield and Brisbane. So Coffs Harbour is the next port of call. 29 miles to go. Just looking at the the GPS over here. 13 minutes at our current rate of knots. Cruising along 2,000 feet. Doing quite well on fuel. Managed to thin it out without losing too many RPM. Just out of interest then, let's have a look at Coffs Harbour. So, it's getting windier actually. What's the wind doing on the ground at Coffs? Uh, we've got the meter here, so 250 degrees, 8 knots. So wind's coming in, so it will be using the runway 21 at Coffs Harbour. Why did that move? Oh, I've got the um, aeroplane tracking on. Whoops. So if we have a look at Navigraph, and zoom out of here, we want Coffs Harbour now. Open the charts for Coffs Harbour, I think we get a lot more. So, have a look at the airfield plan itself. So yeah, we're going to be using Romby 2-1. Uh, is there anything we need to know about here? I'm not sure, let's have a look. Uh, what about approaches? So the runway 21 approaches. So they're looking for marshalling at a waypoint basically and coming in as per normal. There's a VOR approach as well you can do. Interesting. So looking at coming in, oh sorry, travelling away on a radial and then turning back in. Two different radials to fly away. Interesting, out to eight miles and then obviously we've got visual so we don't need to do any of that. It's a lovely clear day for us. So, Gbro says hello from South Bend, Indiana. Hello. Merry Christmas. <laughs> so, we're just coming in. We're about 16 miles out, maybe. 18 miles out. Oh, no. Tell a lie. 23 miles out. I'm terrible at judging distances on charts. So, we are approaching Coffs Harbour. Whoa, there's some serious sectors drawn on the the GPS plot. Something I never usually play with, but if we go and put this into terrain mode, you should see it, it lights up like a Christmas tree. Or not. <laughs> I thought these peaks might show up on it, but... Oh, that's a shame. There's our traffic, we've got the mm, we've got it switched off. Can we turn ADS on from in here? I can never remember where it is. Anyway. Yeah, so I should have said Merry Christmas to everybody on the um the start of the stream really, so Merry Christmas. I <laughs> hope you're all having a a good rest. And not too many arguments. <laughs> we 
we obviously had our um, Christmas day yesterday with um, family came to visit and daughter's boyfriend came for lunch with us so we were all packed around the, the dinner table and all hands on deck all day it was great fun though We all ate too much and drank too much. Ah, someone's on about the traffic. But uh, sorry, the um, ADS. Uh, if we go over to traffic. So I'm just looking sideways to read the, the notes again. Hold the left mouse button and the, and press the right mouse button. Traffic and then scroll up to ADS. Obviously there's no traffic around, but I can see how that works now. So it's, yeah, you have to push in this and then roll it and then push it again. And that turns it on and off. So you're putting the focus into the screen. Okay, we should be getting fairly close. Should we put this nav back onto the first page of the page group? There we go. 15 miles so looking at the the chart here so we've got that beach another beach and it's just beyond that so it's up here miles to run it's a pleasure boat out there like a well not a boat a, a super yacht I'm just trying to remember I'm gonna pop open add-on linker I can't think I think I must have not switched on the seafront simulation stuff otherwise we would have seen them uh, scenery yeah, I haven't switched them on. Oh, so-and-so. Oh, well. So we're not going to see many boats around. That's a shame. Because the seafront simulation boats are really good. If anybody's wondering, on the 182RG, there's a little mirror. And in the real thing, it's there. So you can see if you've dropped your own wheels or not. <laughs> it's quite a good idea, isn't it? Crikey, it's nearly thirty degrees outside. Of course, it is summer in Australia, so, yeah. They have the opposite seasons to us in the UK. I went for a run this morning, and I had gloves on and a waterproof just to keep warm. It wasn't raining, but I know, you know, put a waterproof on, it captures the air in a layer around your body, and it keeps you warm. But, yeah, I only ran about 3K, but it was um, a bit chilly. <laughs> I 
just reading David Dugdale's comment about doing a um, what was his name? Trevor Jacob, yes. Has he been put in prison yet, or had his license taken away forever, or anything like that, or is it still ongoing? Hey, seven miles to run. We should be able to see the airport in the distance soon. Three minutes. We'll do a circle of the, the scenery when we get there. Yeah, so that is, the, that is the runway we can see. It's quite a long runway. Coffs Harbour. So, on the map we've got Sortel, Tormina, North Bombay Valley, Bombay, Coffs Harbour's just north of the airfield then, and Coffs Harbour Jetty, and the Big Banana Fun Park. <laughs> so we'll um, do a circle of this whole area, have a look at it. Okay, what's going on with this? The aeroplane is suddenly banking. I guess we're getting close to the uh, beacon, aren't we? So, what I'm going to do is come off the autopilot now and go for a flight around the area. So, let's descend gently, let's pull the throttle and the propeller back. As we're descending, I'm going to in increase the mixture back up. They still haven't fixed that issue on the edge of the water have they? It's like a a graphical glitch. Should we circle over the main terminal down here? That's just the klaxon from me pulling the power back too far without the gear down. Is that an ATR down there? I think it might be. Making moiré patterns on top of the um, covering down there. It's obviously got some sort of... Yeah, you can see there's a pattern to the, the beams.
So I don't. I'm just reading the comments there from Dave Dugdale. I don't get any crackling with the Caranada aeroplanes. There might be something else that's interacting with them that you've got, maybe. Okay, so we're going to go runway two one, won't we? And then when we have done our touch and go here, we'll loop back in, so get down. Lose some air speed. It's a huge runway, isn't it? We should have the cow flaps open, of course, and I haven't done that. I'm more interested in having a taxi in to go and have a nose around at the terminal because it looks quite impressive. Oh, hello. The simulator has frozen. Let's give it a few seconds. I have no idea what causes that. It's probably something to do with memory management. Rather than mess around taxiing around officially the correct way, we're going to loop back on the runway with special permission that we didn't get. <laughs> I want to go and have a look. Because apparently this has been modelled really nicely. of fire engines, various hangars, Let's just go and stop on the VIP parking spots for the the 738 when it's here. Okay, so if we pass up on the drone camera, I'll just grab my Xbox controller. I'm just going to slow the camera down. And then we'll go and have a nosy around the base. Or the, um, the airfield, I should say. So that's us. We'll leave ourselves on tick over while we're sat here. Welcome to Coffs Harbour. No entry. How are we supposed to go in then? No entry. No entry.
we're on the, because we're air side, aren't we? We need to be on the, the other side. Let's go and speed the camera back up while we're on the way over. Oops. So coming in from the the road end, or road side, I should say. Arrivals. So where's departures? <laughs> Am I being a bit dim here? Oh, we're just going to go through and have a look. It's very cool, isn't it, when they go to this level of detail. I always wonder where they get the people from for these. Is there some agency that just makes 3D people models? Oh, <laughs> Very cool. Oh, they've animated the baggage. I don't believe it. Now, the hours I have spent stood places like this. That is very cool, isn't it? That is just going the extra mile. Let's just have a quick look around then some of the rest of the site. It's got shades of the Death Star here, isn't it? Lots of buttons with no labels. Oops. <laughs> it's a bit twitchy. It is amazing they go to those sort of lengths though, isn't it? With the simulators these days. Right, we are going to go back out to the runway. So yes, Coff Tower available for Morbex is fantastic. Let's just say that much about it. So we just centre this back up. this runway is so huge we can take off at any point along it to be honest I'm just going to go and check the wind again I was just looking at that wind sock and it didn't add up in my head with what we were seeing so yeah we want to turn right left right and then take straight back off on runway 2-1 
I like the on a lot of the payware airfields they've got the texturing that or the patterning in the, the tarmac for the high grip surface. So we want to be going 340 degrees. So if we set this for about 335, that puts us on that intersection angle with the leg. If we go to nav mode, oh, it's already going straight for nav. We're close enough already. Very good. So we're climbing at 1,000 feet a minute. We should be up to 3,000 feet, maybe a bit more power. Ease the RPM a little bit higher. We can leave the cow flaps closed there. I was just going for a higher altitude than previously because of these hills. So we are heading off across this ridge where the Big Banana Fun Park is. Straight over to Grafton. So if we pull up the altitude plot in Little Nav Map and we put this on VFR and we sell it with flying at 3000 feet, we'll get some idea, yeah, you can see those ridges. So 2000 feet would have been fine, but you're supposed to have a 1000 feet clearance over obstacles I'm just going to have a look and see why Nightbot is removing messages from the live stream ok it's just a load of emojis that's why if you can't write sensible things, Nightbot will remove them. Okay, so we've got 30 miles to run. Clear day. Should we move the sun, make it a bit more pretty? 
because we're false time anyway, because it's the middle of the night in Australia. So we'll move the sun into a sunrise for a little while. Actually, we want it a bit higher, don't we? Just so it's lighting the ground up. When it's in silhouette, you can't see anything. the turbulence kicking the aeroplane around. We had some traffic there for a while, look. So if we go and clear that out and increase the range. Okay, why is that not I have a horrible feeling this is why some of the features are kind of hidden away. This has gone wrong. I can no, no longer press anything on it. Which is a shame. I can switch nav but I can't do anything with the display here. The message button's not working. Range button's not working. Ah, have we just caught up? Yes. So there was obviously a dialogue there that was invisible. I pressed clear a few more times and it went away. It's because of this traffic that's nearby. I imagine somebody's following us. Which happens to me a lot. Somebody, they may be on a different server, if we can't see them. If I turn the labels on, it's Banana Dave. Okay. But he was triggering the um, collision warnings. So what we'll do is go and turn that back off. Okay, 20 miles to go. Shall we play with a bit of radio navigation along the way? So we could fly away from 11700 was the Coffs Harbour VOR. So if we go in here and put this on 11700. It was 1700, wasn't it? Yeah, and we're flying obviously on the the same radial that we were on previously, which is 340 degrees, which you can see there. So if we were to tune this to 340-ish, and then switch the CDI over to VLOC, we're now flying the, the radial instead of the GPS track. And I think this will still be reflecting the GPS information. But we now should be able to get 
some information down here about... Do we get DME on this aircraft? I can't remember. Because this is still the satellite information even though we're tracking via... We should get it here, shouldn't we? Oh, I didn't change that to active, that's why. There we go. That's the, that's the radio information. This is the GPS information. We're still getting these warnings. Clear. ADS off. Enter. ADS is off. Okay, I had to confirm it. Take the, the focus away. And now we won't get nearby aircraft tripping the GPS out all the time. Okay, how are we doing on fuel? We've got loads, haven't we? Going to do this so easily. Did I close the cow flap? Yep, I did. So you can see we're just off to the left of the 340 degree trek. So if we wanted to get back onto it, we just need to turn right a few degrees and put this on. Are we on heading mode? No, we're on roll hold. So the plane was just flying along in equilibrium, kind of. So we're just going to turn the plane a little bit across. We can see the on the GPS anyway, the next airfield. So, Grafton. Should we see what Navigraph has on it? So, we'll be landing. Let's have a look at the weather. Well, how do we interpret this? So we look at this number here, 120 degrees, one knot. So we don't need to worry about that. So we've got wind out of the west, one knot. It's coming across the airfield this direction, so we can choose either end. We could go directly in or fly a pattern in, which is sometimes a nice thing to do anyway, just to get a look at the airfield before you come in. Especially if you slow down enough, which I haven't done the last two approaches. So I've come barreling in, struggling to remove airspeed. some sightseeing. So now we've got no hills in the way, pretty much all the way, we might as well drop down to 1500 feet. So we want 1500 feet please, Oops. and we can arm that and then we tell it the rate to come down now. You can see it the speed's going to go into the yellow area, so I'm going to pull the... Actually, we can either do it by the propeller, or we... Sorry, by the propeller or the power. So I'm just going to reduce RPM on the propeller, but keep the revs up. Which means the engine continues to, to run smoothly. But we've just got less thrust. I'm sure real pilots could lecture us for endlessly about correct operation of, you know, the mixtures between mixture, power, and uh, propeller RPM, because it's not as straightforward as you might imagine, and different situations will call for different configurations. And I'm certainly no expert at it. I have got several books on the shelf alongside me, one of which I haven't started to read properly yet, which is to do with um, just GA, kind of piston engine aircraft, but it doesn't really go into turboprops or anything like that. And it only really starts to sort of scratch the surface. I think each engine and each aircraft will be modelled, you know, differently or designed differently. 
so we'll require different means of flying them appropriately. So we're just coming down at through 2,000 feet. 400 feet to go till we're at 1,500 and we should be able to see the ground going by from this sort of altitude. Very cool. Should we scoot over to the co-pilot side? Okay, six miles to run. What was the elevation of Grafton? 110 feet. Okay. It's a couple of knots of wind, so we really don't need to worry too much. We're still running rich mixture, we're just running reduced RPM at the moment. We're down at 1500 feet though, so we can open up the propeller again. So is this it? We can see directly in front of us over here. Because remember, we're, we're not flying the GPS track, we're flying the radial, which is slightly off. You know, I'd be inclined with the altitude we're at to go straight in from here. So let's get the autopilot off. Let's open the cow flaps. Start bleeding some airspeed off. the gear which will give us some drag. Just trying to get the speed down enough that I can drop the flaps. We're a little bit high. Okay, we have flaps. Just side slipping it down with full flaps. There's not really a lot here at Grafton, as far as I'm aware. It's probably used by lots of um, people who work on the land to, to bring people into the area. It'd be worth having a read up on it to find out. There's a lot of turbulence chucking me around. Even though the wind isn't very strong.
flaps up. Full RPM, full throttle. Gently rotate and we come straight off the ground. Gear up. So, good morning in New England to DEFCON 001. So we're just making our way up the eastern Australian coast. We've just left Grafton. We're on our way further north. We're just lining up for the next leg. So, autopilot on, which will go for roll and pitch hold. And we'll switch back to using the GPS because there's no VORs in, in the immediate vicinity. So we'll go nav mode for the lateral navigation. We'll take ourselves back to two and a half thousand feet, maybe. And we'll do that at 800 feet a minute. And we'll come back off the throttle and the propeller. And we'll go and close the cow flaps. And admire the scenery as we trundle across Australia. And I'll have a sip of coffee. Yeah, it's interesting though, Brett, just looking at your comments saying Boxing Day, mate. But, um, I'm not sure if Boxing Day is a term used everywhere. I, I don't know where a lot of the terms come from, I've never read up on it. But I guess it's it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because there's so many different faiths and religions, and different pe different ones follow different pieces of the Christmas story, and a lot of people don't follow it at all. You know, different parts of the world, different dates, different, um, not ceremonies, that's the wrong word, but different, you know, things that they celebrate. I know a lot of Eastern Europe it's a completely different date isn't it? But yeah it's fascinating to me that everybody or so many different people have got different versions of broadly similar stories but maybe with even different iconography, different deities, different you know texts but they're all broadly similar in strange sorts of ways. It's always endlessly fascinating to me. Brett Bowler, have you flown in real life? I watch all your vids and they are very detailed. No, I'm just an enthusiast, just like anyone else who flies around with the flight simulator. It's um, I'm just interested in aviation. So I'm not a real pilot. Couldn't afford to be. Okay, so whereabouts are we? Let's have a look on the map. We are heading out of uh, Grafton towards Evans Head. Now I'm just going to go and check in my Community folder. Actually the best place to look is in the Scenery folder. So Airports Australia. These are switched on at the moment, so I'm just trying to remember what I've got installed. So have I got an Evans Head? No, so that's going to be stock. Bellina I have got. So Bellina will be from a developer called Ozzine, which was sold through um, Orbex. Then Gold Coast. I don't think I've got Gold Coast. But I think the scenery on this, the Australia update updated Gold Coast, I seem to remember. Southport I have got from, again, from Orbex, made by Ozzine. And then Archerfield, I don't think I've got anything special for it. But I just, I didn't fancy taking a small aeroplane into Brisbane. Because that just seems like madness to me, because it wouldn't happen in the real world, or it'd be exceptional circumstances if it did happen.
Yeah, so Defcon saying, I think the cost keeps many people flying virtually. Of course it does. <laughs> and you think about it, you get qualified to fly a real aeroplane, you're going to fly one model of aeroplane, typically, unless your commercial guys have got more chance to be flying lots of different things, you know, because they'll have conversion courses and all the rest of it. But, yeah, your general person who can just about squeak by affording to fly a part-owned or, you know, rental or whatever... So a couple of times a month. It's a different world. And yeah, we can jump in the simulator and for twenty or thirty pounds we can go a brand new we can get a brand new type of aeroplane to go and learn and go barreling around the sky in and making mistakes and trying things and but that's what simulators are for, in my mind. That there's that satisfaction I think of doing things somewhat correctly. But there's also that freedom of being able to to think, I wonder what if, and to actually go try it. It's like I did a video ages ago that went a little bit viral, where I had recently seen a video where, is it Baron Pilot? Where his other half was having flying lessons and she had an emergency on takeoff and the instructor from Sporties took over. And they did essentially the impossible turn and came... They didn't lose the engine, but it was rough. And they turned immediately back from departure and landed on the runway they took off from. And it got me thinking, so I went into the simulator and tried the same thing with several different aeroplanes and different weather conditions. And it was, it was instructive. You had to keep in mind, you know, wind direction and things like that. Not so much to do with um, turning down wind if you've got a crosswind but your location relative to the runway so if you went with the wind you were going to be too far away for the glide to the runway it was it was interesting it made you think about things differently <laughs> in the US you can get old tail draggers fairly cheaply but they're too scary for me, says Tim Miller. <laughs> I guess people put tail draggers on the market because they are difficult to fly and they probably scared their owners. <laughs> well, they're not so much difficult, it's just a very different way of thinking about it, isn't it? They don't fly on rails at all, do they? Happy flight from Toronto, from XO Tobe. Uh, is it Tobe or Toby? So we're just trundling along at the moment on this next leg of our uh, Australian trip. We're on our way slowly towards Gold Coast. We're going to come across a, a group of people flying a group flight further up the coast in a bit. They're running transmitter. So we are about 20 miles out of Evans Head, 25 miles, let's just check the GPS, oh 28 miles, see I told you I was rubbish at distances in the GPS. 28 miles, 12 minutes at this speed. So we are just passing over a whole range of small settlements, McLean, James Creek, Ashby. Chatworth Island, Harwood Island, um, how do you pronounce this? Bunjalung National Park, Woomba. And then we we'll go up to, towards Evans Head. So, as I said earlier, I haven't got anything for Evans Head, but I have got the scenery for Bellina, so that's going to be an interesting one to again do a full stop and go and have a nose around. So we put the head tracking on, go and have a look around the aeroplane, see how it's doing. So manifold pressure's a little bit high but good. RPM's good. Pressures are good. Cylinder head temperature's still good. We're still running rich mixture. We could lean that out a little bit and we'll just keep an eye on the RPM as we do so. In fact, we could lean out quite a lot, look. 
I don't think this is tremendously well modelled. So you can get down to about seven gallons per hour at two and a half thousand feet, and it seems happy with that. Should we just line up the um, HSI with the direction of travel and the heading bug? Whoops. I'm just going to turn the head tracking off while I do it. It's a bit fiddly sometimes when on smaller click spots to get it right. So yeah, just reading Dave's comment there about not flying much over Australia. I haven't in recent months, and I always forget just how interesting. East Coast seems to be quite like Europe in a way. West Coast is completely different. It's, um, it's a fascinating country. And obviously the central part of Australia is all desert, essentially. Um, though you do get wetlands, but you also get a lot of um, just, you know, boulder fields and it's it's interesting lots and lots of really deep red sand yeah so I've seen some screenshots one of my friends took he flew the DC-6 around Australia doing a virtual flight tour and there were some amazing sights up in the northwest of like salt flats and things with really pretty colours. I will admit I picked this kind of 1980s colour scheme on purpose today because I just thought I made a bit of a change from the corporate ones we normally see. So we've got a very kind of retro paint job on the Cessna. Okay, so the next airfield I think is just dropping into view. Nine minutes out. So it's fairly featureless along this beach, unfortunately, otherwise we could go delving around. I guess we could go fly along the waterline just to keep things interesting. So should we do that? Let's turn the autopilot off and go and fly along the beach at low level. We'll put the head tracking on to do it so you get so I can look around as we're skimming the the surf. Descend down then. It's just to give us something interesting to do on the way up towards the next airfield, really. Up to 140 knots, we're getting near to overspeeding, but although I suppose you can go into the yellow, you're just not supposed to stay there for very long. And you have to be mindful if in the yellow area about overstressing with any kind of strong movements of the surfaces, I guess.
Okay. Slowly descending. Rolling it in onto the beach line. Doesn't like pulling the power back, does it, without the gear down? It's quite amusing, really. Let's climb away from the water. It's enough excitement for the moment. <laughs> We've got six miles to run. Not far to go at all. We'll stay manual though. There's no point configuring autopilot from six miles out. So this is Evans Head, I think. Let's just check my memory. Yes, it is. I'm going to cut across the headland. Straight line it.
let's have a look at the map and see exactly where it says the other side of the town is the runways. Okay. So on the ground, we've got the wind showing up, 330 degrees, 11 knots. So coming in from this side. So we could go runway 31 and go in direct over the town as we're looking at it. So we need to get a good look at the airfield to do that. So I'm presuming it's this one here. So get out. Up in the cow flaps. Look at this from outside for a change. It's amazing to me how much the, the flaps cause the fuselage to lift. The amount of force they have is huge. I guess when you look at it, they are enormous surfaces. our shadow. So this obviously is a, a stock air... A, it's a stock airfield. I'm in trouble getting words out today. It's too much food and drink, I think. <laughs> Off up to the next airfield, which isn't very far away, and this is going to be Bolina. 17 miles. So we'll let the aeroplane come up to 1500 feet on the autopilot. Oh, it's already out. Interesting. It was already at the altitude. Uh, we go for nav mode. We can just follow the track. No, I don't have to think about it. Seven minutes to go. So we took off. We did not close the cow flaps. So, whoops. Is that done? <laughs> we landed with such a lean mixture, that's crazy.
So 140 knots on the nose. It's just dragging that down a little bit to about 135. It'll probably stabilise down to Off to Bellina. Get rid of that window now. Let's see what we've got in the way of charts for Bellina. So we just left Evans Head off to Bellina, open charts. Have a look at the airport information. So, so far we've been getting the wind out of the west, haven't we? I failed to see this close that it's going to be any different. 3.30, 11 knots. So 2.4 with a crosswind and by the look of it. Okay, that's fine. Just out of interest, what are the runway 24 approaches like for instrument conditions? They're not too bad, are they? Just, you know, marshal over a waypoint, follow a heading, measure the altitudes on the way in. It's pretty standard stuff. Just going to put this on one side so I can read the live stream comments while also showing something worth looking at. There we go. Landing here looks very delicate. Well, it is. It's lightweight on a 182. It's no, no stronger than it needs to be. It's not like a F-18 where it's <laughs> designed to smash into the ground. At what is it they come in at? 700 feet a minute and they don't flare and they just smash it into the floor. Uh, so DEFCON's off to work. Oh, working on Boxing Day. Oh, it's a shame. Can't wait to. John is saying I can't wait to upgrade my PC and finally get a graphics card so I can run Flight Sim 2020 and X Plane 12. I'm currently running X Plane 11, and the graphics are nothing compared to this. Well, I'm afraid to tell you that X Plane 12 won't be a big improvement. Um, not without spending a fortune on Orbex and all the rest of it. So once you get used to Flight Sim, it makes it increasingly difficult to go back to X Plane. I know I used to fly X Plane 11. Pretty much all the time before I started doing YouTube videos, that was some of my earliest YouTube YouTube videos are with Xplain. So I did. That's kind of how my name became known. I did a, a really detailed video of starting up the the Zebo 737 from start, you know, from cold and dark, and that's what started the ball rolling with me recording and sharing anything. So I did that originally for some friends to show them how, because I'd figured it out. And then the funny thing was, one of the first pers one of the first people that saw my video starting the Zebo mod was a real 737 pilot. And we exchanged messages back and forth over a month or so, and he pointed out things that simmers, as he called them, tend to get wrong. He was very pragmatic, though. He said, you know, there's nothing wrong. It's a simulator, so you do things however you think, but said in the real world and he had a whole list of common mistakes that are made with people who fly simulators versus in the real world and a lot of it was just practical things like um, name, st if you are saying what you're doing so a co-pilot knows you know what you have done of using the correct terminology otherwise and, and <laughs> Every mistake that he pointed out in terms of the naming of things, he said, and the reason why is because you could kill everybody. And it was that was always the reason why. You, know, you have to name the piece of equipment and what you have set it to accurately without using any filler words, no ums, no ahs. And just name the device or the you know, name of the piece of hardware and what you have set it to. Yeah. 
it was um yeah it was an interesting correspondence back and forth he he changed my view of commercial flight quite significantly so we're just approaching by the way um So if we go and fly the reciprocal of runway 24, so if you look on the compass, there's a neat trick here, look. So 24 would be here, so 60 is opposite it on the compass, so we know we need to turn right to 60 degrees. So we'll go and put ourselves into heading mode, and we'll turn the heading bug to 60, and then we know we've got the reciprocal of the runway. So you can see the airfield over here. That's one of the huge advantages to having an HSI with the full compass on it, is you can look backwards, and that's why you get these markers. I don't know if you've ever noticed them around it, that are 45 degree increments typically. It allows you not only to know when you are a beam of something, of an angle, but you also, you know, when you're on the reciprocal of an angle. See, now that's interesting, look. So although that says 24, and we're flying away from 24, let's press D. There we go. I wondered if that was the cause. We were not at the correct angle. And the reason for that is while we've been flying around, this has been drifting. Even though it doesn't have a setting switch inside the aeroplane, it had drifted away from the correct direction which is why in the real aeroplane you'd have a procedure of going between the two on a regular basis, particularly following turns. Because this is driven by a gyro. It has no actual hardware connection to this. Sometimes on more modern ones this can be slaved off of the GPS, and the GPS can obviously use inertial navigation and the satellite readout to know what direction it's going, a bit like your mobile phone does. You know, same technology, really. Or well, same idea. Okay, let's go and slow down. So you can now, we're flying out. We're not going to do the full routine, but we're just flying out on the reciprocal. And we'll turn back in for the wrong way. We can turn this chart off. We don't have to have it there. Or we can see on a little nav map and you can see actually really neatly that the wind is pushing this track away from the reciprocal okay let's just come off the autopilot then and get the gear down which will give us some drag open the cow flaps make sure we've got a rich mixture Obviously, if you're doing this properly, you go and put your landing lights on. And we're slow enough now for the flaps. There's the runway over there. It's just behind the pillar. So gone for the first stage of flaps. So we've got what are called Vati lights on the corner of this runway by the look of it. So there's a red and a white light. The red one's just above the white. As long as you've got one red and one white, you're good. You're at the right altitude. If you go too low, you'll get two reds. If you go too high, you'll get two whites. You can see I've almost got two whites, I think, there, so we're going to descend because we're too high. We're going 
feed some more flaps in, which will give us more drag. Remember we've got that um, crosswind as well. Quite a fierce crosswind across the airfield, which is not going to help our cause. So although the aircraft's pointed out over this direction, you can see we're not making much progress on the airfield. Hopefully when we get lower, that crosswind component won't be quite so fierce. We'll find out very soon. So let's have a look. Can you see the lights down there? At the moment we've got... It's difficult to tell what sort. It might even be pappies actually, looking at that. I thought further out it looked more like Vassy lights, but anyway. So we're just judging it to stay on the centre line. It's quite a big runway. As I said earlier, this is an Orbex sourced payware airfield, so I'm going to go and taxi up to the terminals. We'll park up and have a look around. So if this is Pappy's, let's just descend much further and see what happens to those colours. No, it's, they're not reacting, are they? It's just lights, by the look of it. I thought they might be, but it doesn't look like they are. Flaps up. The, that crosswind is really trying to push the tail to the left, the nose to the right. I'm going to fight it. So the aeroplane's trying to weather vane into the wind. You can see the windsock over there, look. It's perpendicular to the wrong way. Whoa, we've just overshot this taxiway. There's another one over here. This looks really nicely modelled, doesn't it? You can see straight away with like the weather or well, weathering on the um, the buildings. Should we go and taxi past them before we come up to the terminal? Be nosy and have a look in the hangars. Do this from outside. Ah. Okay, empty hangar. After all of that, it's a tractor. I'm going to get in trouble now for going across the grass, aren't I?
Okay, we'll do the same trick as before. We'll um, go to the drone camera, which I will centre up on the back of the aeroplane before we start whizzing around with it. And let's have a look around the airfield complex. So this is Bellina. Bellina Byron Gateway Airport. So they haven't done the interior on the arrivals side. Have they done the interior on the air side? No. So they've kept it so it's going to be very good frame rate, basically. Which I actually prefer to the super detailed, although the detailed ones are impressive in their own way. I actually prefer them done like this, so then it's not going to affect you flying the aeroplane so badly. And I, I know it can all be configured for load on demand and all that kind of stuff, but... Yeah, it's a good airport. It's nicely done. So, just having a quick look at the live stream. Okay, so we're going to head off from Bellina further north. Let's go and have a look at the map, see where we're going next. So you can see there's the track on Little Nav Map of us, us flying in. So then, oh, we have a, a group flight descending upon us. What server are they on? Let's have a look. They're on the West Europe server. So <laughs> if we go and change servers and put ourselves on West Europe, they're going to suddenly see me on the map. <laughs> um, we want to get out of here, don't we, before they start chasing us. <laughs> so if we were to take off... It's a crosswind, so we can just double back, take off to straight out. OK. Okay. So flaps up, we don't need flaps for takeoff. Fifty knots coming up through sixty knots, gently rotate and we're up. Gear up. And cow flaps. And start left turn. Come off the power and the propeller a little bit. Turn off that landing light. Uh, 
And if we have a look behind ourselves now and turn the labels on, we should see the group flight that was behind us earlier. He says famous last words. Interesting. Oh, so there's Banana Dave that's been with us for a while. Maybe they're not on the server they said they were on. Oh well, doesn't matter. Okay, so we're coming up towards 1500 feet, which is fine. So we'll go and get the autopilot back on. So we arm 1500, tell it to come up 500 feet a minute. We go nav mode, fairly near the track already. And it's gone, yeah, it's doing it correctly now, look. So it's doing roll hold. We could do heading hold and nav at the same time. But we don't want to do that much heading. Oh my word. Oh. Why is it head tracking and click spots have a fit when you least want them to? There we go. So... The actual direction of track we want is 344 degrees. So if we go and look down here, we'll go and put this on the 344. It's about there. So we're just intersecting it, and then this will switch to nav at an appropriate moment when it's close enough. Let's just have another look at this group flight then, see what they're using. So he says he's using West Europe. He's using North Europe. Or he, say, he says he is. So none of them have bothered updating their transmitter. So I might as well not have ever added that to the transmitter program, have I? Anyway. Let's carry on. So next on our list, 35 miles up range off the screen here. This one here we're going to fly over. Uh, I'll just show you it. I'm going to go straight past. There's a little airfield here. Tiagara Airport. We're going straight up to Gold Coast next. So we'll increase the range on this. And you can just see Gold Coast up there at the top. So we'll grab some scenery to look at a gold post. That uh, gold post, <laughs> Gold Coast. <laughs> Apologise for that one. So now we're up at uh, fifteen hundred feet. Although um, let's just try this. So we're using eleven gallons per hour at the moment. I'm just watching the RPM as we do this. This is where I think the carinata is fall down a little bit, because obviously this should be having an effect, look, and it's not. Although it's not reducing the fuel flow a lot. Seven point four. And we're holding the same RPM, so it's not super realistic, but we do save some fuel. Which is always good. Yeah, the server setting in transmitter is purely to tell other people, that, just to show people if they're un unsure what we're talking about here. If we go to virtual flight online slash who, you can install this for yourself, by the way, now it's all been open sourced. I ought to put a link to it in this page. Um, we're down here, by the way. So if I can click on myself, you can see there's me live. Um, but you get to say what server you're on within the client just so you can tell others if they were trying to find you. Anyway. There's some boats. Starting to get into a bit more interesting scenery out there now. Some big hills. So what Hills. Okay, it's the Lamington National Park and the border ranges. 
that we can see in the distance. I've flown around here before. There's a fantastic. If you can, you can. It's, I think this is a crater or a caldera. What's left of it? Um, there's a fantastic little airfield called Yeah Nobby's Creek in the bottom of the the valley down there. But it's a great flight to follow that, you know, the ridge. It's very, very pretty out there. In fact, we're not doing anything other than going straight up to Gold Coast, are we? Shall we see what distances we would need to do if we were to do this and fly the ridge? So we want to fly 282 degrees for a while, and that'll be almost across the wind. So we'll go to heading bug mode, and we'll go 282. going to fly for the National Park and have a look at it. So I'm going to get some altitude so we'll be able to see it. It's better to see it from altitude, to be honest. So we'll go up to 5,000 feet, arm it, we'll climb at 1,000 feet a minute if we can, we'll push the engine a little bit and the RPM. So we're holding a thousand feet a minute. The airspeed is coming off, but it should stay okay. Coming up through 2,000 feet. So we're just going to go sightseeing on the way to Gold Coast. So yeah, that wind is pushing us, so we're going to cut off the corner a little bit. Cut into the wind to straighten us up on the track. We're going to go and have a look at some of these amazing hills out here. So we're just coming up through two and a half thousand feet. Just getting comfortable. Three thousand might be enough, you know. Let's level the aeroplane out. We can come back off that RPM a little bit now. should get our airspeed back. Remember this is indicated airspeed though, so the higher you get the the more it deviates from ground speed. You get ground speed down here on the GPS, so we're showing that's interesting. Oh, of course this is in relation to the plot, not in relation to the direction we're actually going. Yeah. So the more we deviate from it, the the more it won't actually reflect what's going on. Okay, so we're going to fly through this big gap up here into this huge circular feature. Yeah? As you can see here, we're heading up this way. Okay. So at the moment it looks like we're going to fly straight over the top of that, so we're going to turn right a bit more. So we'll point the aircraft 300 degrees. The wind's going to push us sideways, remember. But we're coming more into the wind, so that vector difference will have less and less impact. But we're looking, there's a low point is over here. Obviously the hills here were higher. Yeah, you can see there's that gap. 
which we can see here. I'm going to go and admire the views of the National Park on the way round. a lot of trees. Is this a Cessna 207? No, it's not. It's the 182RG with a very 1980s paint job on it. So we were going to be going straight into Gold Coast, but we're going to go and have a look at this huge, you can see it now, forming look. I'm pretty sure it's either an extinct volcano or an impact site from, you know, prehistory. Because if you look at it on the map, I mean, look at it. The reason I think it might be an impact site is because it has the, the mountain in the middle. With... I say it's the only sign of ejector outside of it. Maybe it is a volcano, I don't know. You'd have to get a geologist to answer that one. Or just look it up online, I'm sure you can find out. But it's very, very kind of extreme scenery out here. So we're coming in at 3,000 feet. And we basically just follow this range of hills round and then come out the other end, pointing at Gold Coast. Temptation's going to get the better of me. I'm going to have to go and look up to see if this is a caldera or a volcano. So, if we look it up on the nav map, so this is the Wallumbin, that's the phonetic pronunciation, Wallumbin National Park. So, I'm going to search for it quickly on a different machine. Wallumbin National Park. It's a caldera. It's an erosion caldera, apparently. So it's not an impact. It's a remnant of a central vent of an ancient volcano that 20 million years ago stretched from Mount Tambourine in the north of Lismore in the south. This spectacular feature can be viewed from a range of vantage points, blah 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 blah. It's the Tweed Caldera, one of the world's largest and best examples of an erosion caldera. There you go, now we know. So this entire thing then it was just a massive volcano
So this is the... Um, Alex is asking what plane this is. This is the Cessna 182RG from Coronado. So if I turn the head tracking back on for a moment. If we have a look outside. RG means retractable gear. So Cessna 182 is just like a Cessna 172. It's a bit more strongly made and it's got a more powerful engine. It's a bit heavier, a bit faster. But yeah, retractable gear is <laughs> quite amusing. If you look underneath, the nose wheel retracts through these doors here, but the, the rear wheels just hinge and flip up into the body with no wheels. It's quite rudimentary, I think the word is. But yeah, we're exploring this enormous caldera look. Can you see the feature here? We're just entering the side of it. So on the map, it's huge. side. So, once we get far enough across here, we should be able to turn directly, to be honest, for Gold Coast. So if we went out to this wall, and then measure from here to Gold Coast. We're going to get fairly close to that middle bit, but we might be high enough to get away with it. So we're kind of aiming to get through there. <laughs> So what were we looking for? Uh, 35 degrees magnetic on the compass. So let's try it. If we go a little bit early, we can always adjust. That's 35. Obviously we haven't counted for wind there. Um, we're going to have a crosswind, so we probably want 30 degrees. That was 350, I was being an idiot earlier. So go for 30 degrees on the HSI. So we're going to just cut across the top of this central part of the caldera. It's huge though, isn't it? This huge circle of cliffs all the way around for... Must be 20 miles wide. Oh, we can measure it, can't we? How wide is the feature? Measure distance. 16 miles wide. Okay. So Lee says good morning and a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you too, Lee. What is my setup? It's in the notes of the video. To, so I don't have to ask, ask answer every time if you drop down the information on the, underneath the title of the video um, my specs are in there it's basically a 3080 um, uh, i7 is it? and a 16 gig of RAM it's a gaming PC basically so they're well matched components but one of the biggest wins is I have fibre to the house which means it can keep up with supplying the data for the landscape or it can most days until Microsoft servers are having a bad day. And then you get the little message saying that you can't deliver the data in time. No, there's no need to apologise. It's, it's 
it's not exactly signposted that I've written the notes in the comments. Whoa, this is getting a bit dicey. We're getting updrafts, aren't we, from and turbulence from the wind hitting the, the sides of the caldera. How are we doing for fuel, by the way? So we'll look. Coming down towards half a tank slowly, but we've been pretty judicious, haven't we, with the um, the fuel flow along the way. It's still roasting high out there, I think. So still a little 70 degrees ish, 25 centigrade ish. So let's have a look at the plot. So we cut off a little bit early, as we said, but yeah, we're pretty much on course to get straight into um, Gold Coast. So we're going to fly almost straight over Nobby's Creek. I have landed at Nobby's Creek in the past. It's a great little place to go and visit. So we're heading back off towards the coast now. We should see Gold Coast. So, yeah, I haven't got any custom scenery for Gold Coast, but I believe it was upgraded as part of the Australia World Update, so... This plane really is being thrown around, isn't it, with the turbulence over these peaks? Why am I I switch tanks? I don't have to in this aeroplane, because it has a setting for both. Can you see that? So it's doing it itself. It's just taking from both tanks. Okay, so we've got about 15 miles to run into Gold Coast, and then Southport, and then onto our final airfield today. Oh, I think it is. Let's just, just double check the route map. Yeah, so Southport and then Archerfield. But we may go and have a little look around Brisbane before we land at Archerfield. I might need another coffee. <laughs> I think the weather's coming in, isn't it? We saw this on Navigraph when we took off. That getting closer to Brisbane, there was some weather. So we're going to pull the radar plot back up. So we're just coming back across here. Brisbane's over here. But let's pull up the radar, shall we? Yeah, it's, it's out to sea, though. And we saw from the wind, we presumed it was going to be pushed away. So we may not see anything of it, although there's little spits and spots of it around this caldera by the look of it. Which is what you can see, obviously. Little bits and pieces of cloud. What about over that way? No, nothing. Oh, there's something behind us, so... What about... has managed to put his aeroplane into a mountainside. Um, oh yeah, I've done that before. <laughs> I think we all have. That's the wonderful thing about simulators, isn't it? You can wander off and go make a cup of tea. You can't really do that in a Cessna in the real world. 
So as soon as we get past these ridges, I'm going to start descending. We've got 10 miles to run. There's Gold Coast down here, look. So just looking at the map, it's just to the the north of the main built-up area. And then obviously it extends all the way along. How are we doing in terms of the plot that we drew? Yeah, so we want about five degrees right, I guess. And we can start descending. We've just got this ridge line to miss that we're coming up towards. So if we drop to a thousand feet, and we do it at just 500 feet a minute. And we'll start slowing down. Just take some power away. Actually, I could do this with RPM instead of power, couldn't I? So um, I'm being asked if we're going to do a teardrop entry. That's a really good question. I haven't figured out what we're going to do when we get there yet. So Gold Coast, let's get rid of that now. Uh, right click on the measurement. So the wind is coming in. We're going to runway 32, which doesn't have any um, I mean the, the normal approach. Yeah, you'd be go, you'd be swinging way out for a precision approach, but we've still got visual. So let's come off the autopilot. Over the the suburbs. I don't know if you can hear in my microphone. The cat has just walked in and is meowing at me because he's hungry. I'm obviously the only person who ever listens to him because he always comes to me first. He knows I'm the softest touch, probably. So we're going to do a Spitfire approach. We're just doing a touch and go anyway. But it would be good fun, though, to double back and have a look around the Gold Coast, wouldn't it? The buildings along here are quite cool. So maybe we do that first. We circle around along the beach. just descending. So we'll continue on the direction we're going. Just getting down to the altitude where it starts to render cars on the roads, which is quite always quite cool, I think. the airfield. But we're just going to nip over to the coast over here. If 
we get this right, we could dip in along the the waterway here and come out right past the buildings, couldn't we? Wonder which the best way to do this would be. This looks a bit Planet of the Apes, doesn't it? When you see the um, photogrammetry up close, it's like this post-apocalyptic world. It's very odd. Get down, we're just going to pull in tight onto the runway for a straight in. So we want the cow flaps open, we want rich mixture, we want high RPM. Okay, so we carry on a little way up the coast and we go to another Orbex airfield where we're going to stop and have a look around. I think it's uh, Southport, isn't it? Yeah. YSPT. So we won't go too high, so we can have our nose along the beach along the way. We can pull back to 50% throttle. So if we go for autopilot on, just do altitude hold, whatever we're at at the moment. We'll pull the heading bug around. And we'll just hoodle along. We're about 750 feet, if this is to be believed. Let's see if we can... Yeah, this has drifted again where we've made some big turns. Again, some fairly huge turbulence. It's 
a rift in the landscape there. Let's hope no kaijus climb out of here. Um, so we're seeing the edge, I guess, of... Now, let me get this right. Gold Coast, yeah. So we're going to fly past the Gold Coast on the way to Southport. Which would be interesting. Cheers from California from Sacktown Aviation. Merry Christmas from England. So we've got a, a boat. I wish I'd turned on the seafront simulations add-ons before I started the flight. We would have had commercial traffic out in the channel out here. We would have had yachts and all manner of things along the coastline here. Okay, let's drop this down to 500 feet above sea level. And we're going to do the cardinal sin of steering using the heading mode bug. There's a boat over here. It's the traditional sippy yacht, where apparently there's thousands of them in the world, in flight sim world anyway. I just dropped down to 500 feet, so when we get along the coast up here, we can actually see some of these nice buildings. I didn't raise the cow flaps, did I? I've done it now. Okay, so some really nice photogrammetry along here, isn't there? Really good quality. I'm just going to turn us a few more degrees to the right so we don't hit anything. So out across the bay, and we should be able to find our way to 
the South Pole. Um, this is the Gold Coast in Australia, so Justin's just asking on the live stream in chat. So if we go and... I'm just cutting across the scenery here towards the airport we're looking for. But um, we've just come up the eastern coast of Australia and we've just come up along the Gold Coast. And we're heading towards Southport airport so you can see it's just down here so I'm going to come off the autopilot and we'll circle overhead and figure out what we're going to do so I'm going to turn bank right and climb so we can both spot the airport and figure out what we're going to do with the wind so it's just across to the out of our port window then. And the wind is coming in from the northwest. So runway zero one with a crosswind, I guess. So we're just gonna circle the entire airfield, which makes sense for us. So we just gotta spot the airfield. Is this it down here? Looks like it, doesn't it? It's a huge shopping mall down here, retail park. Everybody off buying their discount stuff. We can probably zoom in and see exactly the name of it. If I was better at this. <laughs> I'm sure people from Australia will be able to tell us the exact name of the Right, so there's the airfield. So we're going to go left pan around and then come in. So this is an Orbex rendition of Southport, so it should be quite good. It looks like it's just a load of hangars though. It's not, um, obviously, because you've got uh, Brisbane a bit, not very far away from us, so. speed. Okay, gear can come down. So we want 190 for the downwind. flaps Wrong way. 
Oh, look at the sim pausing. Doesn't it pick its moments? Just give it a moment. I'll freeze myself in time till it lets go. And there we go. It's just released. So, RPM up to max RPM. Roll it in for the approach. Didn't put the landing light on, did I? It's on there. Now, we've got a crosswind to deal with, and I can't remember which direction it's coming from, according to us, but we'll, we can soon figure it out. Of course, with the tree cover, it may be inconsequential, because that might shelter us from the crosswind. Yeah, it's coming in from the left. So we could sideslip this to make it point towards the runway, which I've just started doing. Start introducing some power. Don't have any fussy lights or anything, so it's just on us. We're going a bit slow. Oh, we do have lights. They're right on the edge of the runway, though. But I'm not sure if they're actually functional. I think they're just to help with orientation. The cones, I think, rather than lights. If you miss the runway, you're going to rip your wheels off on the concrete bollards. So this is Southport from Orbex. It's a very narrow runway. It just seems to be an awful lot of hangers. <laughs> so I'm not sure if there's actually room to to taxi back or if we have to backtrack on the runway. We'll find out. How close is our wing going to get to that hangar? Or oh, maybe not as close as it looks. Let's have a look from outside. Yeah, we're fine. Here comes the kamikaze flight sim van. He almost missed us, didn't he? He must have been busy eating a sausage roll or something. Is he not going to try and reverse into us? Let's put the flaps back up. Oh, here comes the cat again. Oh, someone else coming in to land. Good job. Okay, I'm going to put the parking brake on here go to the drone camera and we'll do the same trick again that we did earlier um, and go and have a nose around so yeah this is typical Orbex look they haven't done the interior to save on frame rate but the exterior is done quite nicely Caravan down here. Let's 
Southport Flying Club, and they've got a few people dotted about. Very good. Right, we're going to jump back into the air then and carry on on our journey. So flaps up, we won't need flaps, it's a nice long runway. Boot full of right rudder though to stop the aeroplane um, turning into the wind. So it comes 60 knots, let's wait for 70 this time and gently rotate. Gear up. Look at the crab angle I'm having to hold just to maintain runway direction. Okay. So we are on the final leg. We're gonna turn towards Now, what was the name of the final airfield? I've forgotten his name. Archer Field. So we'll take this up to 1500 feet. Autopilot on arm 1500. Whoops. At What's this doing? Thinks it's climbing at 1500 feet a minute. Yeah, good luck with that before you stall, you silly aeroplane. Um, we are going to go heading bug mode. So we've got 26 miles to run. 16 minutes until we get there. And it's just winding out the vertical speed. I'm always a bit sceptical whether I've programmed this correctly. So there we go, 1500 feet. We're now off on our way towards Archerfield. Obviously to the just to the north of Archerfield is Brisbane, the city itself, so we may go and have a nose around Brisbane before we land at Archerfield. So while we're on our way, I'm going to grab a quick drink. I'll leave it on the outside view for a while. Oh, we need to do the cow flaps. I forgot again. I'm getting good at that, aren't I? And pull the propeller back. Just set ourselves up for cruise. The cat is now destroying the carpet in protest of not being fed. So I'll go and sort that as well. Be back in a few minutes put it on the outside for you.
Okay, I'm just back quickly while waiting for the kettle to boil. Um, let's see where we are. 19 miles to run, 9 minutes. Quarry on the right, on the sorry, on the left as we come past, but look at it. So if you have a look on the map, you can see exactly where that is. Ormo Hills. So we should be able to see Brisbane City Centre out here somewhere. Starting to render in, render in hopefully in the next few minutes. Serious quarry there, aren't they? Busy removing the the entire hill Minecraft style. <laughs> okay, let's just take a quick look at this, we'll increase the range. There we go, you can see the destination there now. Across the way. I'll be back in a moment. Okay, I'm back. 14 miles to run, 6 minutes 40 to go. Let's put the head tracking back on, centre it up. That's better. I don't know Brisbane very well. I've not flown around this part of the world in the simulator very often. So um, I don't know what landmarks you go by. Obviously it has got various hills around the place which you could use if you knew them. And obviously there's the ocean which is your easiest landmark. Aha, we can finally see the city. So, the question is, do we aim for the city? See, if we put this on satellite view in little nav map, doesn't really help. So maybe we head for the city then. I'm on heading mode anyway. go and have a nose around the city before we come back to Archerfield, which is over there somewhere. I'm sure we'll find it. I 
Okay, so we are basically near the, the end of today's flight. So we just need to go and circle Brisbane a few times. Or, you know, cir circle the, the city a few times. Look, have a look at some of the landmarks. And then we'll go on our way again. I'm just going to turn the head tracking off so I can have a slurp of coffee without it throwing the view out across the airplane. <laughs> Just for a bit of fun, should we swing the sun around to be in the evening? It's still early in the morning, but on the timing I've got set here. So you can see how in the ocean there was a lot of rain out there, wasn't there? And we're getting rain rainbows up here out in the rain. Classic flight sim shot. <laughs> Or the other one that you always see people doing screenshots of is trying to line this up so you get the sun through the cabin. Easier said than done. We'll just put the head tracking on and have a look. See the sun coming down. Now let's put the sun back in the morning. It was better. It was about 7:40, wasn't it? We had it on earlier. Lost GPS positioning. Wonder why. What's going on? Why have we lost GPS? Oh, it's just woken back up. Not enough satellites, maybe. Okay, so we can see downtown Brisbane, and we can see the building, the, so the roads, with the traffic still on it. They haven't tidied it off of the graphics. Um, let's go and turn off the autopilot. We're going by hand. So should we follow the main road in? Oh, we're now starting to get some animated. Whoops some animated vehicles on the road
pretty impressive, isn't it? We are going to circle the city several times, so you won't miss anything. I'm just trying to reposition slightly. Let's drop down to the river. I don't think the bridges are well modelled, but it's just photogrammetry, isn't it? They haven't replaced them with 3D assets. Though some of them appear to have been done. Like this one here. But not all of them. fly under it. <laughs> I'm not going to try today. Okay, we've had our fun. Let's head back out towards Archerfield. Just a 
circling back. And there it is. Just straighten up so we can do a, a fast pass of this skyscraper. The, the Meriton Hotel, I'm guessing. Okay. So we're about six miles away from it. Let's have a look on the map and see what we're going to do in terms of an approach. So we're just coming back round south. We've got a couple of runways that aren't supposed to be used. We've got wind from the north. Yep, at nine knots on the ground level. So, 28 maybe? So maybe we'll circle the airfield. So you can see the airfield out here in this flattened area. So we're just coming back up to a thousand feet, which is great. Cow flaps opened, ready. So what we're essentially doing here is approaching this side, loop around and left circuit in. I guess if we use 28 right, then we can use the first turn off probably to come back in towards the buildings. Okay, so here's the airfield. I just love looking down into the little kind of residential areas to see, you know, what life might be like different parts of the world. I think it's fantastic. I, I never grow tired of just flying along in flight simulator and seeing the world. It's um, it's brilliant to me. It's almost, you know, the, almost the aeroplane becomes secondary to experiencing the world, even if it's just the simulated world. It always is endlessly fascinating. far end of the right hand runway from the perspective of the other you know from of the approach the left hand runway from this side
So we're trying to get speed under control. Get the gear down. Put the landing lights on. We already had the landing lights on, didn't we? Put the taxi lights on as well. Hopefully not crash into the ground while I'm busy concentrating on other things. So we're just doing the pattern to to come in. Okay, so you can see there's a fair amount of crosswind going on and those is pointing off to the right quite a lot so we can combat that by just side slipping the airplane towards the wrong way and then using roll to traverse left and right or to translate left and right across the wrong way while maintaining runway direction with the airframe. Unexpectedly smooth. Wheel brakes. And taxi back. Where are we supposed to go here? I don't think this is a normal kind of airport, is it? It's more of a logistics transport place. Let's have a look. Yeah, the GA parking it does appear to be down this way. So we're carrying on a straight line. across the tarmac, <laughs> ignoring all of the other... 
obviously a hotel over next to the airport. I'm just going to park here, you know. Okay, so park and break on. some fresh air in. <laughs> Very good. So I hope you enjoyed that little trip along the coast of Australia from... where did we start out from? Let's have a look, let's recap. We started out way further back down the coast in Port Macquarie, which is where I ended up at the other evening after leaving uh, Sydney, wasn't it? So we've just gone Kempsey, Coffs Harbour, Grafton, Evans Head, Ballina. And then we went on a bit of a um, an excursion <laughs> around the, the crater at Wollumbin. Also the um, Caldera, sorry, not crater. And then Gold Coast, Southport, and finally, and those around Brisbane, and then dropped into Archerfield. So there you go. That's my flying fix for a few days at least. <laughs> so I'll, uh, I'll see you all again soon. Take care.